Hello and welcome back. Um, I was watching a show about John Bedini and um, the fellas that he used to hang out with and um, they were talking about, or he was talking about, uh, the magnets and um, the flux of the magnets and how the, the one of the keys to understanding uh, his over unity devices was the um, interception of the, the flux of the magnets. And um, he also went to lengths to explain how he was ousted from uh, the, his friend's circle and uh, how much it affected him. And I uh, actually felt sorry for the guy because he ended up committing suicide. Don't know if it was because of that or other factors involved, um, but just, yeah, very sad. Anyway, what John came up with, or what they came up with, uh, was the simple fact that with magnet, the flux lines come out, originate from the centre. Oops, sorry, this board's a bit... And... Oops. So anyway, flux, the flux would go like that, see? So there's an area in the middle where... There's an area in the middle there where the, um, if you were able to put, in their case, a coil of wire, um, they made a coil of wire, and it was able to interrupt the, the magnet, the flux of the magnet, and um, they were able to get more power out than in, a lot more, like a huge amount more. Um, but in this experiment, all I'm going to do is, I'm basically going to put a coil of wire through the middle here, because as you can see, the flux goes out from the middle on both sides. The aim is to make the coil as skinny as possible. And what actually happens is when you run a pulse DC, preferably of high frequency, um, through that coil, it will cause the an interruption to the um, to the flux lines and it'll sort of wobble. It'll wobble, and that wobbling um, will go out and out and out and then out and out and out and it'll cause quite a disturbance to the flux of that magnet so that when it's sitting on top of another coil um, that will generate the um, the EMF within that coil so we'll see how we go. Well there it is I've got the coil wrapped around it's probably overkill it's quite a fair bit of copper on there but we'll see we'll see how it goes this is I don't expect to have anything super duper at this stage I'm just experimenting really and see how we go um, so I'll tape that up and try and squish it together as much as I can. Now I've actually managed to um, squish it up pretty well, considering how much is on there. Um, that side as well is not too bad. Uh, let's. What I want to do now is try and cover that with something um, that will uh, prevent the induction of that coil uh, interfering with the induction of the bigger coil. Um, so we want to try and insulate that magnetically somehow. Um, I'll have a bit of a think about that. So as far as shielding goes, um, I've covered the coil with just one of these and tightened it up, one of these steel collars, locking collars. Um, that won't stop, it won't stop the effect of um, the coil completely, but it will actually aid it, it'll actually push it out to the side rather than directly, sorry, push it out to the side rather than directly through the, the steel. So it's a, steel's the best insulator other than mu metal. Um, and since we don't have mu metal, uh, the steel collar will do the job, hopefully. Uh, so the next step is to put it on our um, bigger coil and see what happens. So at the moment, I'm just gonna put it on this coil here. Uh, and and see what sort of voltage and current we get out of that coil. Um, I don't expect too much, like I said. Um, this is just an experiment at this stage, but we'll just see if, it, if it's got any credence, basically. So here we're um, dealing with 12 volts and 40 milliamps. We'll see how we go. Out of our main power supply, DC power supply. That's going to our signal generator, um, which I'll turn on now. There we go, it's on. As you can see, the voltage has dropped, but the milliamps haven't. Uh, that then comes to out here to our coil, uh, and then from the bottom coil comes to our multimeter. So we'll turn our multimeter on and see if it's doing anything. 
and you can see a very small uh, 168 millivolts uh, coming out of that particular coil and if we go to dead short uh, pretty much nothing yeah, it's some reason it's not producing anything at all um, that I'd like it to uh, I might try a different tact so actually what I'm going to do is um, we're back on our voltage I'm going to just turn the uh, knob here and see uh, what have we got two yeah, it's not going to get much out of it, I'm afraid. Seven, eight, seven. That's about the biggest, highest amount of voltage we're going to get out of it. Current wise, uh, still absolutely no current for some reason. That's on the correct setting. So I'm not sure. Maybe because that, that coil there is so fine, the wire is so fine. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll have to muck around and see what the hell's going on. I'll come back. Well, I haven't had too much success, to be honest. Um, I swapped over the bar magnet for these two neodymium magnets. They're on this underneath that coil. And then we've got our magnet with its own coil. Um, so you can see the setup. All right, and now I'll show you the, <laughs> the pretty poor results. If you listen closely, you'll hear it ringing. So that's that coil. Uh, our volts are now one, one volt. And we have uh, 10.4 uh, ultra amps, so really not, not collecting much at all, really. Um, I guess the only thing I can try is to beef up the, uh, the current and see what happens here. So changing... Um, our DC supply voltage and the current um, has also made a difference. Uh, so now we've got 11, <laughs> 11 uh, and let's just check the voltage there. Uh, 1.2 volts. What have we got? 1.2 volts. Um, so changing, what I actually did was I dropped the current. Uh, 50, 60. As you can see, I've got, I'll change that. Let's say 100 milliamps on the power supply. Um, really hasn't made much difference there in the voltage. And really, actually, we felt there, as you can see, no difference at all. Uh, so on our dead short current. So what I found was 50 milliamps, there you go, 56, and voltage being at 6 volts. Um, was actually the sweet spot for that coil, for that arrangement, although it's really putting out two parts and nothing. Um, but what I can do now is I can try and tune it with this uh, gain and uh, whatever. Anyway, so you can see that it makes a huge difference. Uh, try and find the sweet spot. That's too far. So the gain I went too far, so I'm just winding it back a bit. Uh, see if we can't get a better result. There you go. 1.3, 1.4 volts. Yeah, that's about it. There, 1.4 volts. And I would suggest um, our current is not, <laughs> not going to be too good. There you go, 11 <laughs> ultra amps. Um, so really nothing's coming out of there. Not much is happening there, to be honest. Um, I guess it does prove the theory, maybe. Uh, what do you reckon? Uh, it's an interesting experiment. Um, but clearly, I think what I have to do is get a signal generator that's going to go up into the megahertz. Um, this is only between, I think, 200 and 200,000 kilohertz. Um, so really, there's not much to play with there with that little baby. Um, so I think higher the, the frequency, the better off we'll be. So the only thing different is I changed out the magnet for a, a ring magnet, as you can see. Uh, and it's given us back uh, one volt, so less voltage, 
and I think the current's a little bit less as well, which tends to indicate that the theory of yeah, 9.6, the theory uh, that the magnets uh, play a role in the system is, is probably proven right there. Um, the stronger neodymium magnet versus the um, that ring magnet there, the ferrite ring magnet, uh, and so pretty yeah, it does confirm the theory. It just has to uh, we just have to play around with it and try and maybe adjust this coil, um, maybe try a different size wire, maybe thinner wire, maybe, uh, and also maybe less turns, more turns. I don't know. It's going to be a fine balance, whatever I do. I think. Um, very interested to hear your thoughts on this uh, in combination with our signal generator, which I think should, it might be a different waveform that reacts better to. Um, so, uh, and also the frequency, um, I think needs to be much higher. That's what I can gather. It's really high frequency. So uh, if you could tell me your thoughts, um, that'd be great. Thanks, see ya. Okay, so just an addendum. Um, just by mucking around, reducing the voltage and mucking around with the current uh, and mucking around with our frequency settings, um, managed to get it up to 1.9 volts, which is um, not too bad. And the, the Henry's, well, I mean the um, microamps, uh, it's 20 microamps now. So <laughs> that's, that just goes to show you muck around with it a bit and yeah, you can start tuning it. Um, still reckon it's the high frequency that's going to do the job. Uh, so thanks for watching. Catch you later.